fifth album. And Adam, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the studio. Thank you, Bob. As I was saying at the beginning, it's difficult really to know where to start in terms of talking to you. But let's start with the album, shall we? Okay. When did you actually make it? About uh, four months ago. Mm -hmm. How many people did you use? We didn't use... Well, we, we used a lot... We didn't use many people doing the backing tracks. Uh, but we used a big orchestra when we were doing overdubs. Mm -hmm. About 50 or 60 piece orchestra. How long did it take you to do? Well, it took about a month to write. Dave Courtney and I went to Nassau for a couple of weeks and finished off the writing. And then it took about four weeks recording it. Mm. Was it difficult, in a sense, going back into yeah, the studio and petrified. recording yourself? I was petrified. Well, I, I mean, really, all the vocals on it were down to Dave because he was the only one there to be objective about it. Yeah. And he really nursed me through the vocals. I thought if I'd had, had to do it myself, I wouldn't have done the album. If it hadn't have been for him, I wouldn't have gone into it. How did your partnership with David materialise, Evan? Well, when I, was, uh, when I was doing Cabaret years ago, Dave's group, I, I hired Dave's group, which were a Brighton-based group, to back me when the roulettes and I parted company. And Dave was the drummer. And I struck up a friendship with Dave's dad. And, uh, and then eventually Dave and I became friends and then I went into rap and I, through their family I moved down to Sussex. And we all sort of were friends and everything. And Dave was getting pe fed up with working around garages and everything and he wanted to break in to write him. So he put an advert in the paper, in the local paper, for groups and singers, and Leo with a group came along. Right. He auditioned about 100 groups, and Leo was the last one. <laughs> the very last one. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And he, sort of, he phoned me up, he said, I found a fabulous group. I said, oh, I don't know, Dave. You know, I'm busy, I'm working on Budgie and I can't get involved in all that. I haven't heard the radio for four years, I don't want to start getting into music and everything. And he pestered and persisted and persisted, he said, you've got to hear this boy. And I heard him, and I thought, yeah, I, yeah, he's a good singer, Dave, but you know, there's nothing thrilling about this material. So Dave went away and wrote with Leo. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was like magic. And those bloody songs started to come out. Yeah. Because you yourself, I mean, when you did stop singing yourself in the early 60s, I mean, it, it was a very sudden break that you made, yeah. wasn't it, at that yeah. point? I was doing cabaret at the time, and I was getting sick to death of myself. Keep going on there, and had a suit on and a tie, and <laughs> was really felt stupid after a while, making an idiot of myself, I was. <laughs> so I thought, I've got to stop, I can't do this any longer. I felt, I couldn't go home and walk in the front door, I felt humiliated because I was doing something that just I just couldn't relate to. So I woke up one more, I was thinking about it for a long time, I said, I'm going to pack this up, I can't stand this bloody thing any longer. And then one morning I woke up and I said, right, that's it. I went to the office and said, I don't want any more dates. That's it, it's finished. Was it that easy to do at that point? Well, I mean, I was so sick of myself, it was easy to make the decision. Mm. If I'd have been doing something that I really enjoyed, I would never have given it up. But I hated it so much, it was an easy thing to give up. Mm. It wasn't until afterwards that it sort of dawned on me about the, giving up the money each week. If I'd have thought about that too much, I may not have done it. <laughs> How did Budgie come about, Adam? Because that was such a fantastic series. Yeah, well then, when I, 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 I went into repertory for about four years, and towards the end of it, an agent called Dennis Van Thal, who was my agent for theatre work, mm. acting, came along and saw me. At Northampton I was doing uh, Twelfth Night. And he said, you know, he said, I think you ought to stop doing repertory now. I think you're ready to do a TV series. So I said, well, go on then. Find us a TV series. I don't know where to get a TV series. You're the agent. So he says, all right. He said, come and see me in the office next week and we'll sort something out. And he said, I went in the office. He said, look, I've got a lot of writers on my books and uh, do you know a couple of writers called Keith Waterhouse, Willis Hall. Oh, Christ. I said, yeah, I do. They're like idols. 
So I said, yeah. So he phoned up Willis there and then in the office. He said, Willis, so I've got uh, Adam Faith here in the office and uh, we're sort of mulling around some ideas. He's got any idea for a TV series? So Willis says, yeah, I've got an idea. I've had one knocking around for three years. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> it's like a miracle. So he said, let's have lunch tomorrow. So I went and had lunch with him and it was budgie. And that's how it came That's exactly, uh, six months later on the air. So at what point then, when, when you were doing Budgie, did, did you come across Leo? Well, it was towards the end of the first series that Dave started to come on strong about Leo. Mm. And then I had a period of about eight months, I think it was, between the two series. Mm. Then when Dave and I really worked hard on getting Leo together. Mm. So it was towards the end of the first series. Did you feel it was an advantage for you, coming in, in a sense, cold from outside back into the business, in terms of, of looking at it from an objective viewpoint? Well, from a management point of yeah, view. Yeah. Well, I must say, I mean, it is easier for somebody that has been established to uh, do the rounds with somebody. Mm. I mean, I, I, God knows, I don't know how people, like the local butcher that manages a group, how they get together and come into the business and get to meet people I don't know mm. it must be so hard for them because mm. people like to deal with pros don't they yeah so I suppose it was easier for me to get I mean if when I wanted to do deals for Leo whether I did the deals or not was another matter but it was easy to get the appointments to make the deals mm. Mm. the film too the new one Stardust yeah it's come off well I hear I haven't seen it yet but it, I just funny, I just spoke to David Putnam, the producer, and he said he's dubbed some of the film now, and it's really come out well. Yeah, well, I've not seen it either, but the reviews I've read have been fantastic. Was it was it a good film to make? Did you enjoy doing it? Well, I don't know, but I don't. You know, I've stopped enjoying work really this last couple of three years, and what I think it is, I don't enjoy the works. When, when I first started, I loved the work, and hated the success because the way I th I think it was that when you first start. You're so excited to work. It's all so new to you. You're just getting up there and you're singing and everything. And you hate the success because you're frightened to like it. Because you think, tomorrow I'm going to be back in the factory. Mm. So you reject all the success as much as you can because you don't want to get used to it. And slowly but surely, as you get more experienced, you make more demands on yourself. So the work becomes harder and harder. And... You hate the actual doing of it because it's so hard to do because you, you demand more of it. So your standards get higher and you start appreciating and enjoying the success that it brings. Mm. So I don't, I, do, I mean, I, it's like the army. When you've finished it, you do look back and you've had a lot of laughs doing it. And David's a great boy as well, mm. David Essex. Just, just one final question, Adam. Are you going to take the album onto the road yourself? I mean, will we see you performing the album? I don't know. Dave and I were talking about that. We're thinking maybe we might do just a couple of sort of concerts with it. Mm. Yeah, well, using the people you've got on the LP. Well, I can't use some of them, because... But the basics I would use, yeah. Mm. Mm. Adam, it's nice to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bob.